What is going on everybody? I have a quick video for you here today. We just passed a Model S. So I'm often asked, how do I stop autopilot from nagging? People say even though they keep their hand on the wheel, they still get the nag from autopilot. So you get the little blue popping up here saying, put your hand on the wheel. Now, the first thing I'll say is in slower traffic like this, you get nagged much less often, um, but you can see my hands are not on the wheel. We're gonna wait for that nag to come up and then I will show you what I do. Okay, so that actually took quite a while. You can see the message has come up, it's bugging me. So all I do is I keep my hand down in the bottom left here and I grab on and then I just kind of let the dead weight of my arm pull on the steering wheel. I usually have my arm resting. I don't know if you can see from that angle. Let me turn this just temporarily. Um, I usually have my arm resting on my leg or on the side of the door here. And this is pretty much how I spend all my time in autopilot. I don't really need to adjust anything. Um, if I'm on longer drives than just a normal day to work or something, sometimes this position will get tiring. So I can just flip my hand over. This does the exact same thing. This is fine. And even if I wanna to switch to the other hand, I can do this. Um, okay, just gotta make sure you can see that. So now this hand has its dead weight on the wheel and I have my elbow on the armrest in the middle. And all of these positions are really comfortable and I can hold them for a long time. Uh, but this is my favorite one. That's pretty much how you'll see me in any of my autopilot challenges or whenever I'm driving, that's just what I do. And I will say it does take some practice to get this exactly right. If you pull too hard, of course, you know, you come out of autopilot. And for me, that is totally ridiculous because now I'm used to it. But when you're new, sometimes you'll pull a little too hard and then it just kind of comes right out of autopilot. And then the other mistake people will make is, is they don't put enough weight on the wheel, of course, and then they'll have their hand here, but they're still getting bugged. This is really all it takes. And this is enough also for automatic lane changes. And I don't think I'm gonna get one here because of all the traffic. But if my car right now was to wanna make an automatic lane change, I wouldn't need to change anything. My car would automatically do that lane change just with the weight of my hand on the wheel. And that's all I need. So this is how I'll do an entire Tesla challenge without changing anything, without doing anything, the car will do it all. So I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Now let's get to the question of the day. Or that sounds kind of nerdy. Uh, is there a better name for that question of the video? I don't know. Tell me what to call it. Okay, so welcome to question time. Maybe we can just call it question time. That's innocent enough. So today's question is kind of a long one. Maybe I won't read the whole thing. Does anyone think there's a cap on how much Tesla can get away with raising the price of full self-driving? It's got to be a balancing act between raising the price with new features versus the price getting so high no one ever adds full self-driving to their initial purchase anymore. I didn't know the cost had gone up, so I just checked here in Canada, and yep, used to be 7K, now it's $9,500. So this is a great point. Of course, if you make full self-driving cost $100,000, nobody's gonna buy it, or almost nobody. But I think as the features get better, they really can get away with raising it a lot. If the car actually starts responding to stop signs and stop lights, that is going to be insanely impressive. Everybody's gonna want it. And I could see them charging a lot of money, up to $10,000 for that, if, if not a little bit more. I think the bigger problem comes not with people willing to spend the money. I think if the features are impressive enough, people will want it and they will want to spend the money. It's pricing people out that just literally cannot afford it. So when you're getting the car, if you get the full self-driving, it's nice because you can roll it into your loan but people have a limit on how much they're allowed to borrow or how much they can afford. So if Tesla makes it too expensive, yeah, they're gonna kind of push some people away. But the big thing with this question is if robo taxis really happen, and uh, don't get me wrong, I, I'm excited for them and I would for sure use that service with my car. I am skeptical about them, but anyway, if they do happen, that makes the full self-driving price limit that you're asking about really, really high because at that point, the car literally pays for itself uh, when you're at work or whatever. So it, this this doesn't work for everybody. You may not be in a situation where your car can be a robo taxi. Like if your commute is really long, let's say you go to work and by the time you get home, you only have 20% left or something daily. You don't really have much buffer for your car to be driving around uh, all day while you're working. But I know for me, I usually get home with uh, anywhere from 50 to 65%, anywhere in that range. And I work in the city. So my car doesn't have to drive very far at all 
to do some short trips here and there to drop people off, you know, at different places in the city. So anyway, this was kind of a long one. Um, it, it's a really good thought experiment, but I think once the features get more and more impressive, the price is going to get really, really high, especially because people can, of course, just buy the Tesla without that option. They can still buy a Tesla. It's just, oh, well, I can't have all the crazy fancy stuff. I can just have the basic autopilot. All right, let me know what you think about that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and you will see me in the next video.